Hey there everybody. I just wanted to make a quick video going over the protocol of the liver. I'll begin uh, with the, the normal views and then I'll go over some of the, uh, the anatomy as I'm going through. So for the first image you want to get is uh, the left lobe of the liver. Right here you can see the left lobe. You see some of, some of pancreas right here. Alright, here's another picture. Uh, your second picture could be with the left lobe of the liver and the aorta. So you have your abdominal aorta here. You have your first branch, which is the celiac trunk, and then your second branch, which is the superior mesenteric artery. Here you can see a little bit of stomach going into duodenum, some more pancreas. Uh, you can notice also here the vessels, like this one here, has no uh, hyperechoic walls. This is a hepatic vein, and then these, which have echogenic walls, are portal veins. Um, portal veins usually have more echogenic walls because of the fibro fatty tissue that's within the portal vein wall. All right, so for this other image, you can, uh, you're going to get left lobe and caudate lobe, also ligaments and venosum and IVC. So here's still more of your left lobe. Here's a hepatic vein. This is your ligament and venosum, caudate lobe. The ligament and venosum is a remnant of uh, fetal anatomy, which is the ductus venosus, which uh, shunts blood from the from the umbilical vein into the IVC, bypassing the liver and the fetus. And then here you have a very clear IVC going into the right atrium. This is a better picture showing the ligamentum venosum and the cauti lobe. So in this image you can see the IVC is more collapsed than on the, the other patient. Um, here is your right renal artery, which is usually posterior to the IVC. And a nice view of the ligamentum venosum right here, this echogenic fissure. All right, your next image can be uh, through the gallbladder. Uh, this patient has a, this is the gallbladder right here. This area here is called the main lobar fissure. Um, on some patients, it's much more clear. It looks just like a thin line, just like the ligamentum venosum. This patient's gallbladder was contracted because they were non-fasting. So here you have your portal vein, gallbladder. Starting to see a little bit of right kidney here. All right, so here, this is around the mid-axillary line level. You got a nice portion of right lobe of the liver and your right kidney. Your right, the right, uh, the liver is usually supposed to be hyperechoic or sometimes uh, can be isoechoic to the right kidney, but it's usually slightly hyperechoic. If it's very, very hyperechoic, they can be having a fatty liver. Um, if the kidney is hyperechoic to the liver, then you have to consider some type of uh, renal failure or medical renal disease. And this section here is a good sp uh, spot to measure the liver span from here to here. So here you got your diaphragm, this echogenic line right here, right kidney, right lobe of the liver, the psoas muscles right here. You can see the striations within the muscle and then just some bowel here, likely the ascending colon. All right, so this is a transverse view. Um, here you got some portal vein, ligamentum venosum. This is your IVC. So this would be caudate lobe. And over on this side, you have right lobe of the liver. More inferior, you get left lobe here. This is the ligamentum teres. On some people, it's also more prominent. That's also where the umbilical vein goes through. And here's right lobe of the liver. Here you have your pancreas. On the process, head, neck, body, and tail, not so, uh, not so well visualized here. And then here you have the portal splenic confluence. Here would be your superior mesenteric artery, aorta, and a slightly collapsed IVC. Within the head over here of the portal vein, you can see the common bowel duct and gastroduodenal artery. But here's a transverse view of the liver at the level of the hepatic veins. Um, usually, most people have a configuration of three hepatic veins, right, middle, and left. Left separates the left lobe of the liver into medial and lateral segments. Uh, the middle hepatic vein separates the liver into right and left lobes. And then the right hepatic vein sep uh, segments the liver into right anterior and posterior segments. When it comes to segments of the, uh, of the liver, there's a, another in-depth segmental anatomy called Cunard's anatomy, which is used especially for, for surgeons. Um, I will link up to a very good article that uh, goes in-depth of those subsegments, there's eight segments um, that further 
further divide the liver into anterior, posterior, superior, and inferior segments. So I'll link to that so you can read that article, which is very good. All right, here's another transverse view of the liver. Here you got your IVC, portal vein. Here you got your portal triad. You can see but the portal triad is a portal vein, hepatic artery, and common bowel duct. And here you see the walls of the portal vein are echogenic. So here's right lobe of the liver. You're starting to see a little bit of gallbladder here. Some of the right kidney. And here's um, further down. You got your slightly contracted gallbladder, which looks like it has thickened walls, but um, that would be a false measurement as the, the gallbladder has to be distended and to measure the wall. There may be some sludge there. Um, of course, if the gallbladder was more distended, you'd be able to discern them more. You also, you also got to be sure that you're not getting um, some type of reverberation artifacts within the anechloic bile that's inside the gallbladder. So here's more right lobe, right there. Like I said before, it's uh, liver's divided into left lobe, right lobe, and caudate lobe. And some people have a segment called their Rydell's lobe, which is a long protrusion of the right inferior tip of the liver. Um, it's commonly seen in thin women, and here you got your, your right kidney. IVC. So here's a sagittal view of the gallbladder. Again, like I said before, it's, the, uh, it's a contracted gallbladder, non-fasting, but you can see it's pretty clear. And here's some more portal vein here, and here you see the echogenic walls of this portal vein branch. All right, and here is a normal distended gallbladder uh, to compare. Here's a portal vein at the portal hepatis. So the portal vein going into the liver, you see the portal vein, a little piece of the hepatic artery, and the common bowel duct. Obviously, you'd have to put a color doppler to discern which one is the hepatic artery, which one's the common bowel duct, and then you can measure the common bowel duct, which is uh, usually around below 3 millimeters, though that changes, you know, and, and older people can be bigger. Uh, also, in people are, that are post-cholecystectomy, it can be bigger. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. In the future, I will be going over um, the protocol for portal vein Doppler. All right. Thank you. Take care.